So Jeremy Corbyn appeared on Democracy Now! to discuss the war in Ukraine. He was asked a question he's been asked multiple times and he's given largely the same answer. Take a look. I welcome the call by a thousand religious leaders and many, many other people. And I've had a number of very interesting discussions all around Washington yesterday on the possibilities of promoting the idea of a uh, internationally organized ceasefire and negotiations. I absolutely and totally condemn the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the brutality that goes with it. And the destruction of life in the Ukraine, the loss of lives of conscripted Russian soldiers is awful and appalling. This war could drag on and on and on. More and more arms could be thrown into the conflict. More and more people would die and you'd end up with destruction all around. Surely to goodness, here we are in the 21st century watching in real time a conflict going on. Can we not do better than that? Call a halt to the conflict, have negotiations and agree on a viable future. Now, obviously ignoring what the mainstream media say, that goes over my head, I'm not particularly interested. But when independent outlets call them out, especially those on the left, then I'm going to listen. Now, some of the left has said that Ukraine has exposed a lot of tankies. In my opinion, yeah, that's probably true. But I think that's more random people on Twitter. I think it's less so in real life, potentially. Now, this charge has been made against Corbyn. Is he a tanky? Is he an apologist for Putin and the USSR? Even Vorsch recently did a video on him and said his foreign policy is horrible. Then every, like, every position they could possibly have that's favorable to Russia is for, like, no reason. No reason. It, it's, it's so weird. Just a lot of lefty brain rot. A lot of lefties just think that in order to be, like, a leftist geopolitically, you have to side with the other narrative and you're siding with the military-industrial complex if you agree with basic factual things. So it's important to criticise our own, and being on the left, we are certainly experts at that, uh, but I think it's healthy, I think it's correct to do so against those we support, and Corbyn is no exception. But is he a tanky? Look, I probably agree with 99% with what he says. Um, however, I don't fully agree with his stance in Ukraine. Now, to be fair, I always maintain that it's important to have his viewpoint. Dissent is integral in a democracy, and I still believe he is coming from a good place. If I'm completely honest, my stance isn't particularly strong overall. I admit that I have more knowledge on certain policy areas than others. I'd say I have a grasp on what's happening in Ukraine, but not enough to call people Putin's puppet, especially since I've been called that many times. Now, Corbyn's view is entirely consistent throughout his life. Peace. He is a strong advocate for dialogue. Does that make him naive? Well, I don't think so, since historically, he has always been bang on when it comes to foreign policy, namely Iraq. He was also part of the peace talks with Northern Ireland. Now, I'm not sure how much influence he personally had, but what we do know is that those that called Corbyn an IRA apologist at the time, and to be honest, people still say that today, were also secretly in talks with them. So the man has a resume. I think when he talks about this stuff, it's important to listen. Yet, I disagree with Ukraine. Now, I'm not banging my fists on the table demanding that we send everything over to them immediately, but I'm not against sending aid and weapons to help fight against an invasion. And that's exactly what it is. It's an invasion. Now, Corbyn is completely correct when he asks about the arms and where they ultimately end up. It's a legitimate question. He does that a lot when he's asked about issues regarding foreign policy, is when we do send arms, where does the guns and weapons end up? However, that's a whole separate system that needs to be destroyed. Now, minus Ukraine from the equation, the industry is still going to do just fine. We need to be questioning our direct role within it. But for the time being, I'm not against helping Ukraine, with the caveat of absolutely no boots on the ground. Yeah, mostly I'm a non-interventionist. Support is one thing, getting fully involved is another. But thankfully, I don't think that's on the table. Negotiations should be happening alongside. So rather than just picking one avenue, we can send aid, send weapons, and also take the Corbyn approach. I, I, do you know what? I call it the Corbyn approach, but it's not. Many people think the same as him. So we can do both. We can use multiple tools at our disposal. Now, if I'm completely honest, Ukraine winning the war is kind of unlikely, um, but they're going to try regardless. You know, if Russia or any other country was invading our nation, we'd definitely try to defeat them, right? 
so it's a completely legitimate response. Now, there's a lot of people who are comparing World War II and the Nazis to this conflict. Now, I can see what they're doing. It's a way of smearing those that aren't, you know, painting themselves head to toe in Ukrainian colours as the modern day appeasers and will be the same with Hitler. Just stop. This is nothing like World War II. Hitler literally committed genocide. Now, what's happening today is more about imperialism. It's about the tensions between the West and Russia. And on this particular issue, yes, there are blame on both sides. Now, don't get me wrong. Russia invading a sovereign nation is no one's fault but Putin. But the reason why the relationship historically between Russia and the West is the way it is, we have a lot that we did wrong too. NATO was supposed to be disbanded when the Warsaw Pact did, but it didn't. Ever since, NATO has been expanding and US imperialism has been the driving force between so much global conflict. So do I think Corbyn would have appeased Hitler? Fuck no. I would still vote for him in a heartbeat if he was an option. He would have changed, or at least tried to change, so many things for the better. He would have been the first prime minister not interested in Western imperialist capitalism. So yes, I disagree on Ukraine, but is Jeremy Corbyn a tanky? Absolutely not. 